my wife likes us to go on day trips in our car. Not easy for a husband and wife to travel together in a car. <laughs> After you've been married a while, it's sometimes dangerous to be in a confined space <laughs> with no witnesses. <laughs> the main problem is the design of the passenger seat. You know, back before there were cars, you would have like a horse and buggy or a stagecoach or a chuck wagon, or for those with motion sickness, an up chuck wagon. <laughs> that was back when riding shotgun meant riding shotgun. The passenger's job was to watch for robbers or hijackers, give them a speedy trial, and then announce the verdict loud and clear through at least one of the barrels of a 3 out 3 <laughs> Well, eventually some sissy figured that was not politically correct. So the passenger's job changed from hired killer the navigator. <laughs> You'd hear mom giving course corrections to dad or clearing her throat real loud so he'd know he was going the wrong way. <laughs> then along came the GPS. Well, now a man could get directions from some little gizmo that never made a judgment or held a grudge. <laughs> the only downside was the passenger now had nothing to do. <laughs> Yet, there they were. <laughs> Sitting right up front. They could reach the knobs and dials on the dashboard, control the radio and the heater, and so on. And worst of all, they had time to talk to you. <laughs> and you were trapped behind the steering wheel and couldn't get away. Whenever you see a car that T-boned a bridge or drove over a cliff, if there's an older couple in the front seat, probably wasn't an accident. <laughs> So if you want your marriage to last, you're gonna to have to make a major renovation to the passenger area. <laughs> you know when you have a newborn baby in the car seat and the manufacturer will recommend that for safety, you put the seat in so the baby's facing the back of the car. <laughs> That's step one. <laughs> you take out the passenger seat, swing her around 180 degrees. Get it facing the other way. Now the passenger can't see what you're doing, so they're not able to give advice or criticism. Plus, they can't reach any of the controls on the dashboard, which are really none of their business. <laughs> and having a conversation with the driver is real tough. So it's all good news. Much safer for your wife to be sitting backwards where she can talk to the kids face to face and just leave you out of it. <laughs> or, if you're lucky enough not to have kids, <laughs> you can convert the back seat into a hobby center slash craft corner. <laughs> Your wife's gonna love that. She'll be making really ugly quilts and animal shaped tea cozies well into the next century. <laughs> now she may say she prefer to have a vanity back there so she can do her hair and touch up her makeup, but you gotta be careful because a vanity always has a mirror in it. That's going to let her see what you're up to, which kills the whole deal. On the other hand, if your wife does most of the driving, bonus, lose the crafts, drop a big screen TV back there. Come on. Everybody will be happy. It'll stop you from flinching. It'll save your marriage. And at your age, this is the only fun you're going to have in the back seat. All right, Steve, where do you come up with this stuff? You know, I've, I've got a mind that sees things oddly, you know, and uh, I've, I've managed to turn that into an asset rather than a liability. Well, it's a great asset. 300 you. shows you did. The yeah, Red a couple Green of them show. weren't bad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're not all right. You know, it was one of those things. I started in Canada, and uh, the way I got the show on the air, I went to the local TV station. Huh? I said, uh, I need you to give me enough money that I can do something but not enough that you care what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about duct tape. Yeah. Most men, I find, uh, have one thing on their mind. 
how long is this going to take? You know, <laughs> wherever they go, they go to a show, they go to a concert, they go to see their relatives. How long are we going to be? They're just, I, can, I can go two hours, you know, if I know. Yeah. So duct tape, you can fix something in 10 or 15 minutes. And another thing is, why have a repair job that outlives you, you know? <laughs> so having to fix something several times is a glimpse of immortality. Now, let's talk about this tour because I, I looked at the schedule yeah. on the website. Mm -hmm. Steve, you're all over the place. Oh, I, I mean, to, you're all yeah. over America. You're all over Canada. Yeah. A lot of the shows are already sold out, but you've got yeah. a lot of shows where people can still come. Yeah. That's a pretty ambitious schedule you've put together. It is. I didn't know if it was going to be my last tour or my second last one, so that's why I called it This Could Be It. What's the next one going to... The next one's going to be called This Is Definitely It, you know? <laughs> or you could be like Cher. She's had like 17 farewell concerts, and she's still going. So. I can't afford the surgery, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you want the surgery she's had either. No, no. <laughs> Please don't do that. If you do, you're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so when you've worked with some great comedians, I, I've seen some of the bits uh, on television with Dave Thomas, one yeah. of the funniest people. Yeah. Did anybody just ring your bell that was just so much fun to work with? I grew up in the 50s where, you know, it was Jackie Gleason and Milton yeah. Berle and Red Skelton and that kind of humor, you know, which wasn't, there's no malice, you know, there's no anger yeah. and there's no obscenity. So I'm out here t in 2019 I'm not angry and I'm not obscene, and yet I can f still find work. Like, it's a miracle. People are hungry for this kind of humor. Maybe. Oh, I'm, I'm convinced. Maybe, yeah. Steve, it's, it's so apparent right. that people are tired of being lectured, they're tired of being yelled at, they're tired of being uh, embarrassed into laughing right. nervously because of something that is so blue. Right. I mean, the reaction that you get from audiences is very evident that what you're presenting is genuine humor, things that make people laugh, because it's just really funny. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you very, very much for being here. My what pleasure. a delight My and pleasure. an honor oh. to have you with us. Thank you, Mike. I thank you very much. Hey, Keith, I want you to tell our audience how they can keep up with Red Green and go to his shows. Let them know. Oh, yes, sir. We'll do that. For Red Green's This Could Be It tour dates, DVDs, streaming episodes of The Red Green Show, and of course, you can join the Possum Lodge. Just visit redgreen.com. He's also on Facebook, at Red Green, and Twitter, at Real Red Green.